When the great global warming swindle was first broadcast, climate deniers thought at last they had the definitive polemic to beat back the forces of science and reason. But actually, the swindle has been one of the most valuable resources that I use in my presentations. Documented proof, all in one place, of the ignorance, laziness, lack of research, and unscrupulousness that are the climate denial racket. To even begin to dissect the swindle, you first have to ask, which version? As the producers began to cut and paste the film as soon as it hit the screen. Viewers of this series will remember how the first version of the film repeated the infamous volcano canard. Volcanoes produce more CO2 each year than all the factories and cars and planes and other sources of man-made carbon dioxide put together. A quick referral to the U.S. Geological Survey makes it clear that human activities release more than 130 times the amount of CO2 emitted by volcanoes, the equivalent of more than 8,000 additional volcanoes like Kilauea. The first version of the film also contained more clips that lasted only a few days before being cut. The first broadcast of the film on March 8, 2007 contained this graph, attributed to NASA, which purported to show the majority of 20th century warming occurred before 1940. Observers quickly noted the difference between this and the real NASA graph, which does appear to show the major part of warming occurring after 1970. The second broadcast, four days later on March 12th, displayed a different graph, with no reference to NASA. A journalistic inquiry uncovered that the actual source of the graph was the Oregon Institute of Science and Medicine, which had produced the graph as part of a faked scientific paper, one of the most notorious and well-documented scientific frauds of the past century. The film's producer, Martin Durkin, continues to defend his work, even as journalists around the world have picked the piece apart. In this interview for Australian ABC television, Durkin defended the piece against withering journalistic fire. Before the Little Ice Age, we find a balmy golden era, when temperatures were higher than they are today, a time known to climatologists as the medieval warm period. Now, do you still stand by that claim? Uh, yes. Here's what our climatologist said about that. When I saw this picture, which shows the medieval warm period warmer than now, and the right-hand side says now, this picture's 20 years old. All the data since then has come off the top. There is little doubt that the last five or seven years has been warmer than any time in the medieval warm period, and that's what we're absolutely certain about. So to show a graph that's 20 years out of date, not to show what happened at the end, not to report the reports, that's just a lie. Yet another graph turned out to be far less than meets the eye. In this discussion of the so-called Holocene warm period, the film suggests that this period, approximately six or seven thousand years ago, was warmer than today by some unknown natural process which we are to suppose is happening again today. Call me what you will, when I'm ignorant of a topic, I prefer to go to actual experts rather than just making stuff up. A few quick taps on Google, and we can find the truth from an authoritative source, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And yes, there's a specific page that describes the science related to this period mid-Holocene, roughly 6,000 years ago, was generally warmer than today, but only in the summer and only in the northern hemisphere. Moreover, we clearly know the cause of this natural warming, which turns out to be well-known orbital factors. And we know without doubt that this proven astronomical climate forcing mechanism cannot be responsible for the warming over the last 100 years. The film also makes a claim in regard to the work of scientist John Christie. 
Dr. Christie is shown taking atmospheric temperature measurements and making the statement that balloon and satellite temperature measurements from the troposphere do not support the theory of global climate change. Uh, the theory is pretty straightforward and the theory says that if the surface warms the upper atmosphere should warm rapidly. The rise in temperature of that part of the atmosphere is not very dramatic at all and really does not match the theory that climate models are expressing at this point. With all the other changes the film has made, you'd think they would have wanted to include that Dr. Christie's work was found to be distorted by defective adjustments in satellite temperature readings, and that a new evaluation of atmospheric temperature, of which Dr. Christie was one of the authors, has found that this significant discrepancy no longer exists because errors in the satellite and radio sound data have been identified and corrected. One of the most famous snafus in the film involves the highly respected MIT oceanographer Dr. Carl Wunsch. Dr. Wunsch was interviewed for the film but was not informed of the true motives of the filmmakers. In a complaint to the filmmaker in Channel 4, Dr. Wunsch wrote, My intent was to explain that warming the ocean could be dangerous because it is such a gigantic reservoir of carbon. By its placement in the film, it appears that I am saying that since carbon dioxide exists in the ocean in such large quantities, human influence must not be very important. Diametrically opposite to the point I was making, which is that global warming is both real and threatening. One of the most stunning and egregious of the film's distortions is in his description of the sun's effect on climate. In his interview with the producer Martin Durkin, Tony Jones subjects this argument to devastating scrutiny. What they found was an incredibly close correlation between what the sun was doing and changes in temperature on Earth. Solar activity, they found, rose sharply to 1940, fell back for almost four decades, and then started to rise again. Well, once again, we asked our climatologists to have a look at this section of the film and to comment on it. They stop the record because they don't mention it falls when the temperature continues, so it's classic. Pick the section of the record that fits your preconception and then leave out the inconvenient parts. The graph conveniently stops at 1980 when the temperature starts to rise much more rapidly and the solar activity decreases, the opposite of what they claim. It's hard to completely understand just what motivates climate deniers. The vast majority of people merely want to know the truth. When lies are dressed up in an attractive package, they can remain circulating for years without being addressed. Clearly, what the producers of this film were counting on is that on the internet, nobody knows you're a fraud. 